What's up, guys? We are back for another round. Um, we have no land. This is unfortunate. Uh, we're going to mulligan. We are on the play. Um, we now have two land, two lightning bolts, two envisions, remand. This is perfectly fine. Opponent mulligan to six as well. Um, doesn't matter because we're going to see envisions turn one anyways, so we'll just bottom this. He put his on top. I think we want to uh, Scott and Turn needs to find us a white source um, and we need to see revisions turn one so there's no way to I guess we could Nah, I think I'm just gonna steam that's I don't know I had there were words that I wanted to say but they were too hard so I chose not to say them Hey, here's a planes. Um, Path Exile I don't think we want, but we'll keep the planes. Taxium Probe. Could be Storm, could be Infect. I think we're pretty happy to face either. Could be, oh yeah, this is a uh, suicide zoo. All right. So he has a one one. The important thing is not dying to, um, oh my gosh, it's been so long since I played this deck, I can't even remember. Uh, Death Shadow. Yeah, the important thing is just not dying to Death Shadow. We should be fine. He has things like mutagenic growth um, that punish lightning bolt. Um, he also has, you know, become a men's team or battle rage, things like that. But I think we are fine to pass back and hold up remand. If he does nothing, we'll just bolt end of turn. But we need to start getting out ahead of his threats. The most important thing, I think. And I'll let him hit us for three here. Yeah, bottoming that path to exile feels pretty bad. But we have four of them. We should find another. He passes back. He can't become immense, but he can meet a genetic growth to save this guy here. That's fine. Used mana, which is interesting. Seabrex arc is pretty good. I think I just want to go ahead and fetch. I think I want to get island. Mm, that doesn't seem right. I, I probably should have definitely got mountain there. I could Lightning Bolt here, but I also kind of want to play Deceiver. Nah, I don't want to play Deceiver. Nah, I'll Bolt. I've changed my mind. Okay. Yeah, it looks like he's floating out a little bit. This is one of the problems with this deck. Um, we'll just get this guy into play. Does play four thought sees, which is important to keep in mind. But it looks like he needs threats. Um, he doesn't have a death shadow. If he had it, he would have played it. All of his stuff costs like one or two mana, so the remands aren't that great. Unless I'm hitting a become immense, um, 
So like he's going to eventually draw like a curd ape or something and our man's gonna feel pretty bad, but we're really just looking for our fifth land at this point. This looks like our opponent got a bad draw, but this is one of the things that made me stop playing this deck. This is actually a, a pretty natural draw. Uh, yeah, I just want lands. This card's pretty much dead. Is he bobbling me or him? Targeting me. Interesting that he's not fetching there. I guess he just doesn't want to take the damage. <coughs> surprised that he's leaving these lands all right it starts to make a little bit more sense I still think he would want to be playing that monastery so spear though Punished. So I have a spell snare for a team or battle rage. Um, I have a remand for become immense. If he fetches a bunch. I could just like bolt and kill him. Maybe I should have left one deceiver back. I think he goes for the kill here, but I have like spell snare for the battle rage, I have a remand for a become immense. Um, he's already used one mutagenic growth and he goes to five but if he like goes for a Jotaxian probe or a street wraith or another mutagenic growth I could just kill him with this lightning bolt. Like these lands have to come into play tapped so he's actually pretty stressed on mana because he has to be careful not to die to this lightning bolt. Like if he shocks here he gets two for each so like um, so he's a two three and then he could be four five and then a 6-7. He does have another land. So that changes the math a little bit. So he has one trigger. He's going to get three more. And he's going to go to four damage. He actually can just kill me. Oh my gosh. Oh no, he only has five he only has five shocks in his deck. I forgot about that. He only has five shocks in his deck. Unless he's playing a six, which I'll be surprised if he does. Most mana bases run eleven shocks or eleven fetches, five shocks. And if they play a seventeenth land, it's another fetch. So I don't think he has another land to get. He's got Overgrown Tomb, Sacred Foundry, Temple Garden. He has he might have a godless shrine. Um, I know he has a blood crypt, so he has stomp. Uh, so the two lands he doesn't have is stomping ground, blood crypt, and I don't think he's playing Godless Shrine.
Yeah, so I'm not sure he can kill me. I think my opponent is coming to this realization as well. I mean, he can cast other spells, but like he can't kill me with land drops. He can become immense me twice though. Um, but he doesn't have two green sources, so he would have to fetch. And then at that point. Yeah, he got his stomping ground, so he has his blood crypt. I know he doesn't have another green source, so yeah, he can't become immense me twice. It ended up being close, but it I don't think it was actually that close. I think we have to remand this. Cast it again, paying life, and then he has to fetch, and then we can kill him with the bolt. He's at 8. Unless he has a bolt of his own. He could be playing Lightning Bolt. I haven't seen a Thought Seize yet. Um, that'd be pretty bad for me if he is playing Lightning Bolt. <sighs> Alright. It's better for us that he's playing Lightning Bolt and not Thought Seize. So we'll take that into the next game. But. Uh, bottoming the path of exile, I think, was pretty bad for me. Time of reinforcements isn't that effective, um, just because he's often at a low, lower life total than us until we're dead. Celestial purge is pretty good. Hit swift spear um, and uh, death shadow. This guy's not so great. Bloodman's great on the play. He can't do anything. He just loses. If he doesn't have a board by the time Blood Moon comes down, it's game over. Um, Wall of Omens is pretty good. Blocks uh, his Monastery Swiss Spears and his um, Wild Nicodles and stuff. Flash Freeze is good as well. I think we just want to get rid of a lot of this expensive stuff. I cut Spell Snare. It hits Team or Battle Rage, but that's it. I have Dispel and other stuff for that. The Remains are bad also, just because I'm losing a mana on that exchange. And I think I just want to trim some twin. I'll win with like Restoration Angel Beats, stuff like that. Ah, uh, one land. This is better. Yeah, our opponent mulliganed, but his deck mulligans often, so. Um, we don't want that. He doesn't have any basics. Path Exile is so good against this deck.
He does have Apostle's Blessing, but we have the Dispel, and I kind of want to get those tricks out of his hand. I think I've seen a couple lists run one forest, but I'd be surprised if he had one there. bolting himself to play a death shadow you gotta love it I'm gonna dispel this though I love that deck bolt yourself to play a death shadow So we know he has Death Shadow and two cards in hand. Um, nothing that causes him damage. So no Apostle's Blessing, no Mutagenic Growth. Um, I guess he could have an Apostle's Blessing, but it only does two. So he probably wouldn't burn. Yeah, I guess it's not out of the question that he doesn't have Apostle's, or Apostle's Blessing or Mutagenic Growth. Um, he doesn't have a Cantrip. I think he could have a uh, Become Immense or Battle Rage, possibly. I think we'll bottom the negate, leave the island. So he's going to do something to me. Here's his turn. That lets him become immense. We're going to clean up. No mutagenic growth. All right, he had it. So we're going to nine, but then uh, we should be able to lock him up from here. Assuming he doesn't have the combo still. I think I take this trade. Yes. But I want to block. That's fine. Probably just playing Resto to eat a guy. Seems better than Deceiver to tap him down. Ah, 
I'll play Deceiver. That gives him another turn to draw Become Immense, though. Well, if he has to Become Immense, I would want him to use it to try and kill the Deceiver. Because the Deceiver can just block Wild Night Coddle all day. So this is probably better. Okay. I don't even know if I want to play this Golden Tarn. That might hold him back. Like, he might attack here, and I can get a creature with the Restoration Angel. Um, if I play Golden Tarn, he might hold back because he doesn't, and then we're in the standoff. So I think I'm just going to pass, leaving the land in hand. So if he has become a manse, and I let him attack. Oh, I guess I could Restoration Angel Deceiver tap down his land in his Declare Attacker step. That way he has to become immense there. And then I could put Deceiver on whoever he become uh, um, targets with the become immense. Um, and then I get to eat a Wild Nicotl. Yeah, so that's better. Because I, I want to be able to ambush a guy. If I blink in the Restoration Angel here, he just won't attack. But here he probably sends everything. So I'm going to tap down an Overgrown Tomb, and this is Indeclare Attacker, so if he wants to use that uh, green, he has to... Yeah! Alright. Game 3, on the draw. Um, yeah, Blood Moon is still good. I don't know, maybe Timely Reinforcements deserves a spot. He often has creatures. If he doesn't have creatures, I think I'm winning. And it's not really about the life, but it's just about guys that can jump. I, I don't know. I had a bunch of other stuff, though. I think I'm fine. And this is where this deck has trouble, um, where I can just like kill a thing, kill a thing, take another thing. He can't really fight through that grind. Wild Nicotl is pretty good against Celestial Purge though. Not against Path to Exile. Yeah, and like now, this is one of the things why I don't think Step Links is very good in the deck, because you have an 0-1, um, you're not often hitting your third land, and then you're it's just sitting there. And he's got like three cards in hand, and I was able to deal with two of his creatures, so like three creatures is a really solid draw for him, and it's just like a couple removal spells, and I was able to trade, and now I'm sitting at 18, and he's just, you know, playing Drago, which is pretty bad for him. I think I want to play Vendillion Click. This thing might just eat a bolt and take something else out of his hand, but I think that's good enough. Now that he's got that guy that can swing, I'm just going to Deceiver and tap him down. Path 
Path is good. The spell is really good. And we're going to path on his turn because of Apostle's Blessing. We also want him to fetch. Makes his uh, um, other step links worse if he draws another one. This might be game. It is game. All right, so that was that. Um, Suicide Zoo is a really good, like, it's a it's a fun deck. It's fast, it's powerful. Um, it can just, you know, it's capable of incredibly explosive draws, but uh, definitely having Path to Exile in addition to Lightning Bolts is really good for me. He doesn't play any basics, so it's, you know, literally one mana removal, no drawback. Um, yeah, I think this is a really good matchup for me. Um, Suicide Zoo beats up on a lot of decks in the format, but Twin probably not so much um i wish we were able to play either a blue matchup or a mid-range matchup but we ran up against two land decks and a aggro deck um we did all right i feel like our amulet player i always feel like they get lucky i, I think it's just a really good deck um better than people give it credit for but uh yeah that's that uh hope you guys enjoyed the videos this week thanks for watching and i will be back next week